Most of my audience are, statistically speaking, Americans, meaning they are Catholics and a handful of non-Catholics of goodwill residing in the United States of America. Clearly, we're headed into a time of uncertainty, and honestly, the assessments people have of some, shall we say, negativity coming in the next few days, going into the coming weeks or maybe even months, may be far overblown. But they may not be. So today, I thought I'd offer something a little different, and by a little different, I mean I thought I'd feature an approved Marian apparition that came bearing a warning and a message of penance and peace that is often overlooked and it bears a message of what the remedy is for these situations. Today I feature the message of Our Lady of Quapa, an otherwise unknown apparition that has been approved by the local ordinary. The message of Our Lady of Quapa, I think, has some things we can learn for our time, for today, for what we are facing in the coming days and weeks if people turn out to be correct about that. But even if they are wrong, the message bears hearing. A special thank you goes out to the patrons and channel members and to our channel sponsor, who all make videos like this possible. Since he was a child, Bernardo Martinez has worked as a sacristan, sweeping, dusting, and washing the linens for his parish in the little town of Cuapa, Nicaragua. One evening in April of 1980, Bernardo went to ring the bell to alert the parish to pray the rosary. Upon hearing the church, he noticed a light glowing around the statue of Our Lady. He thought the boys playing outside might have knocked a shingle off the roof, letting in light. When he got closer, he realized that the light was emanating from the statue itself. While he was in the chapel, Bernardo saw the image of Our Lady, which he was especially fond of, radiating light. The light radiated out from the image, which he saw was more beautiful than ever, and let off enough light for him to walk at a normal pace without tripping. This led Bernardo to make an examination of conscience. In doing so, he recalled certain divisions he had recently caused in the town, as he was a man with a bad temper. He decided to tell the people what had happened, after the recitation of the rosary and publicly ask for their forgiveness. News of the story soon spread throughout the town of Quapa, and many laughed at him for claiming to have seen the image of Our Lady clothed in light. Yet it was obvious that Our Lady was preparing him for what was to come, seeing his change of heart and public apology. This apparition and every, all the events that follow were approved by Bishop Bosco M. Vivas Robelo of Managua in 1982. First Vision, 8th of May, 1980. Bernardo was struggling with personal problems at the time. One restless night, seeing as he was able to, unable to sleep, he decided to go fishing. Around noon, he started to pray in the rosary. He felt immersed in a profound peace, and the hours flew by. At three o'clock, he was surprised to see flashes of lightning in the sky, although there were no signs of rain. He then saw Our Lady on a pure white cloud above one of the nearby trees. Squinting, he realized that the image he was seeing was a real person that blinked. Our Lady opened her arms, and rays of light came forth from them. That was when Bernardo finally decided to ask her her name. She told him in a sweet voice, I come from heaven. I am the mother of Jesus. Then Bernardo asked her what she wanted, and she responded, I want the rosary to be prayed every day. The farmer interrupted her, saying that this was something they already did in the town. However, she insisted, I do not want them to pray it during the month of May alone. I want them to pray it always in their families. From the moment the children reach the age of reason, they should pray it at a set time that does not enter into conflict with the daily tasks of the home. She explained that the Lord is not pleased with prayers done without thinking or rattled off mechanically, and recommended that they pray the rosary accompanied by a reading of the corresponding biblical passages, and with an effort to live according to the word of God. She then added, Love one another. Carry out your duties. Make peace. Do not ask the Lord for peace, for if all you do do not make peace, there will be no peace. Our Lady announced that Nicaragua would suffer greatly if the people did not change. At first, he was reluctant to say anything about this to the people, thinking that that way he would avoid problems. However, he finally told everyone and everything to the people in town and the priest. And as Our Lady had told him, some believed and others did not. On the 8th of June, Our Lady appeared to Bernardo in a dream. He asked her, What do you wish, my mother? She repeated her same message. Then he made her many petitions on behalf of the people. Our Lady replied, 
Some of these will come to pass, others will not. She pointed to a certain place. He looked in that direction and saw what seemed like a movie. First, a large group of people dressed in white, walking towards the eastern horizon, where the sun rises, in a clear light, joyful as they went singing on their way. It seemed like a heavenly banquet. They were the first Christians, many of them martyrs. Then he saw another group dressed in white, with rosaries shining in their hands. One of them was carrying an enormous open book. He read, and afterwards, the people meditated in silence. Then they prayed the Our Father and ten Hail Marys. Our Lady explained, These are the first to whom I gave the rosary. This is how I want you to pray the rosary. He then saw a third group dressed in a coffee-colored vestment, which seemed to him to be Franciscans. They also prayed the rosary. Lastly, there was a fourth group that was so large he could not, not count them all, men and women with rosaries in their hands. Bernardo suddenly felt that he could enter into this group as they were dressed like him. But he looked at their pale hands and saw that they were black. However, like the previous groups, their hands radiated light. He wanted to join them, but Our Lady told him, No, you still have to tell the people what you have seen and heard. And she added, I have shown you the glory of the Lord, and this is what you will all obtain if you obey the Lord and the Lord's word. If you persevere in praying the Holy Rosary and in putting the word of the Lord into practice. September 8th. Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Bernardo went back to the site of the apparitions accompanied by a group of people praying the rosary. Once again, Our Lady appeared above the tree, this time as a seven-year-old girl. She repeated the same message. Bernardo told her of the church that people wanted to build in her honor. There was already a man who had given the first donation to pay for it. She said, no, the Lord does not want material churches. He wants living temples, which is what all of you are. Restore the Lord's sacred temple. The Lord takes all his delight in you, she continued saying. Love one another. Love each other. Forgive one another. Make peace. Do not only pray for peace. Make peace. Our Lady told him not to accept a single cent in donations for the building of this church, for any use whatsoever, in fact. Our Lady weeps on October 13th, the 63rd anniversary of the miracle of the sun at Fatima. She appeared once more in that, on, at the, on that day in the same place, and Bernardo insisted that she let herself be seen by the other people so they would believe. He told her that the people said that it was the devil who appeared to him, and that Our Lady was dead, dead as the dust like any other mortal being. With that, Our Lady was saddened and started to cry. Bernardo thought it was his fault and told her, My Lady, forgive me for what I said. You must be very angry with me. Forgive me. Forgive me. But Our Lady told him, I am not angry, nor do I get angry. I am saddened by these people's hardness of heart. You must pray for them, that they may change. Bernardo started to cry. He was filled with sadness at seeing Our Lady in this state. While Bernardo cried, Our Lady gave him this message. Pray the rosary. Meditate the mysteries. Listen to the word of God spoken in them. Love one another. Love each other. Forgive one another. Make peace. Do not pray for peace without making peace. Otherwise, it will be useless that you pray for it. Carry out your duties. Put the word of the Lord in practice. Try to please God. Serve your neighbor, for that is pleasing to him. Bernardo told her that he had a lot of things to ask of her on behalf of the people. She answered, They ask me for things of no importance. Ask for faith. To have the strength for each one to carry his cross. They cannot be spared the sufferings of this world. Sufferings are the cross that you all must carry. This is how life is. There are difficulties with your husband, your wife, your children, your siblings. Dialogue. Speak with one another in order to resolve your problems in peace. Do not resort to violence. Never resort to violence. Ask for faith so as to obtain patience. Then she told him that she would return no more. In reply, Bernardo began to shout, Do not leave us, my mother. Do not leave us, mother. Do not leave us, my mother. Our Lady calmed him with her words. Do not be troubled. I am with you even though you can't see me. I am the mother of all of you sinners. Love one another. Forgive one another. Make peace, because if you all do not make peace, there will be no peace. Do not resort to violence. Never resort to violence. Nicaragua has suffered much since the earthquake, and it will continue to suffer if you all do not change. If you all do not change, the Third World War will arrive sooner than anticipated. Pray, 
pray to my son for the entire world. The world is threatened by serious dangers. A mother never forgets her children, and I have not forgotten what you have, what you suffer. I am the mother of all of you sinners. Call upon me with these words. Blessed Virgin, you are my mother, the mother of all of us sinners. These were Our Lady of Quapa's last words. Her message is a simple one, yet one we so urgently need to live. Spread peace and forgiveness. Carry out our duties. Accept our cross each day. Love one another and pray from our hearts. Living out the word of God. And remember that she, uh, an ambassador of her son, is always with us. The apparition site of Our Lady of Quapa was declared a diocesan shrine on January 13th, 2013, by the Bishop Socrates René Sandigo, Bishop of Hualgalpa and President of the Nicaraguan Bishops' Conference. Bishop Sandigo celebrated Mass on the site, accompanied by Bishop Fortunatus Noachucus Apostolic Nuncio of Nicaragua, and His Eminence Cardinal Leopoldo Brenes, Archbishop of Managua, on May 8th of the same year. Thus, we have the account of Our Lady of Coapa. And again, what is the message? Like all of these visits of Our Lady is rather simple. Pray the Rosary, not occasionally, but daily. Repent. A chastisement is coming. Perhaps she gave a, uh, an insight into the third secret of Fatima. And these are all approved messages from heaven. We can have peace if we wish, if we pray for it, if we change our ways, if we live that message of peace. Through the Rosary and through our own acts of penance, we can have the peace and the outcomes that we wish. I suggest you pray the rosary this weekend if you're a Catholic who isn't in the habit of doing so regularly, and maybe make it for the attention of what is coming in the next few days, bearing this message in mind for the defeat of evil and to be done peacefully, for finally being able to put to rest the Moloch issue and its grip on our culture, which makes peace impossible, and for the defeat of those who would claim our faith but use it for nefarious ends. And that's all as far as I'll go with that today. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.